fell asleep. I guess he's relieved. <laughs> oh, yeah, good Christ. Um, can we do something? Can we wake him up? Can we even talk to him like this? Or are we gonna have to do something before we can talk to him? Like, try to wake him up. Hey! Uh, um, a pasta shop? Yep! To think the wet noodle will live on when I'm gone. My father started it, you know. So that makes you two the third generation. Meg? Y yes Tomorrow we'll start with the secrets of Do Tossing. Do Tossing? You too, Keith. Y yes? You'll be the best pasta wrangler the West has ever seen! And you! The white man in the back! Um... Me? I can only assume you are here to work for the restaurant. You can take this broom and get right to it. Your payment will be $10 per month. $10?! Sweet! Pasta wrangler? The West? Isn't pasta from Italy? Meg! Y yes You know the best pasta's always been made west of the Rockies, don't you? R right, of course. I mean, everybody knows that. Nick? Huh? How long do we have to keep up with this all, all in the family charade? This old man must know something about the murder. We're not leaving until we find out what that is. Uh, okay, but what about the boat rental shop? Aren't you dealing with boat? Aren't you dealing with boats too? Um, this is a boat rental shop, right? What are you talking about? This here's the Palace of Pasta, the wet noodle. Though, now that you mention it, we haven't gotten many orders from for spaghetti lately. All the kids come up and say, Yo, dude, we wanna ride in one of your boats! That's why I keep them boats out there. Youngsters these days, darned if I understand them. I'm pretty confused myself. Nick, this isn't going anywhere. But this old man is the witness tomorrow, right? I got to find some way of getting information out of him. Okay, well, in that case, what can we do to... <sighs> I don't know. Oh, I guess first things first, we shall present him the badge. I don't know. Uh... Is that a lawyer's badge? Y yes y yes it is. I don't believe it. I can't believe it! This old guy is the first person to recognize my badge. Man, he surely must be feeling pretty darn proud that his son Keith ended up an attorney. I get it. Huh? Uh, yep, I got you figured out now. You're not Keith! Oh no, we have been busted, huh? Nick, Nick, now's the chance to clear things up. Um, sir? No, no, I'm not Keith. And I'm not Meg either. We are here investigating a murder that took place on this lake the other night. Please, help us! Mm, a lawyer, huh? Please, mister. Alright, I'll help. But on one condition. Oh, great. Are we gonna have to do a fetch quest that has to do with uh, his wet noodle restaurant? Are we gonna have an arc over here? 
What's that? When this case is over and done, you'll run the wet noodle. Uh... Sure, why the fuck not? Okay, we promise. Nick, Nick! Are you sure about this? Hey, anything to get this case solved. <laughs> also, who wouldn't want to eat Phoenix noodles? Mmm. Sounds very... That sounds very spicy, now that I think about it. Spicy Phoenix noodles that burn your tongue. But, ooh, are they great. I, I guess so. That's my boy! Good for you, Kif. But wait, wait, did I just say... You too, Meg! Y yes And you too, white man in the back! Uh, you get to cleaning, right now! Uh, <laughs> you bring a tear to the old man's eye, you know. Now, what was that you wanted to know? Uh, speak up, Polly! Hello! Hello! Squawk! Talking to the bird again. How do we get him to talk to us? Okay, well, that was a bit of a waste of time, I think. Uh, I don't know. What should we even present him? Can we. Do we have like another topic over here? Uh, in that case. I don't know. I don't know. Do, do you know anything about any murder that happened near your restaurant? Uh, yep. I seen this. Oh, you did? You, you, you know something about this, sir? Keith. Y yes? It's okay. You can call me that. Dad. Oh my god, Phoenix, is this your... Is this actually your father? I mean, obviously at first glance, he wouldn't be, but maybe he's secretly your father. And you never knew. Don't worry. Your secret is with me. You don't have to worry, Nick. It's between you, me, and the old man. Dad! You know something about this? Yep. The other night. Oh, the <laughs> did, did Phoenix just easily accept calling him dad? I guess so. <laughs> I guess in his mind, he has to do everything to make this conversation going, so might as well. Dad! The other night, out of the lake. Y yes, yes. I know all about that. I've seen it. What? Tell us! Tell us what you saw! Well, I suppose. Since you're taking over the shop and all. Uh, okay, well now can you talk to us about... Uh, yes! Well, what did you see? I forget the time, but it was pretty dark outside. Probably night. Uh, yep. It was after midnight, but... Okay. Then I heard this BANG! So I looked outside. Then I heard another BANG! A little while later, this boat comes back. Then a young man walked by my window here. He was muttering something to himself. Yep. What did he say? Uh, yep. I forgot. Well, of course you forgot. Maybe some good old noodles will spice up your memories. I'll remember tomorrow by court time. Promise. We, we need to know earlier than that. <sighs> well, yeah. you see it. Oh, uh, is that it? Are we... Are we actually done? I guess so.
I as well just, I don't know, offer him some more evidence. Maybe we can get some more information out of him. What about uh, the Gordy article? You know about Gordy? Nope. Uh... Do you recognize this woman? He fell asleep. Mmm. Noodles. Noodles. Alright, well. Um. I don't know, maybe. Let's examine this room while we're at it. I don't know. Um. Let's examine the TV. Wow. He has a television in here, too. Uh, yep. Don't work, though. Uh, really? I picked it up from the dump, after all. It figures that it doesn't work. Then why do you keep it? I don't know. It just looks right there. In the summer, I replace it with a mini-fridge. A broken mini-fridge? Of course! I got that from the dome too! Nobody in their right mind would throw away a good cooler. Why, well, it makes sense! <laughs> it makes fucking sense! Hey, Kotatsu! Nick Nick, he has an electric blanket on his table. Looks warm! That's a great idea. We should do that at the office. We can sit down with the clients, snug and warm, and drink hot cocoa. Mmm. <laughs> so comfy. And what? Well, talk about murders? No. You're a potty pooper, Nick. Well, hey. I, I. I know that. I think we know that the topic of murder can be grim, but. There can be some fun stuff to talk about. Actually, no, I remember. <laughs> I remember one time I had to solve a case where somebody got killed via a hydraulic press. And let me tell you, that victim fell sort of flat in the end. Eh? Eh? It was too forced, eh? <laughs> okay, um. Let's check uh, the parrot over here. Hello there, parrot. Wow, what an amazing parrot that is. Good morning. Hello. He, he ignored me. <laughs> what, you forgot, Meg? I gotta call her name first. Her name? Oh, yeah. How you been? Hello! Hello! Hwah! See? Neat! So the parrot's name is Polly! Uh... What? Why? What? Why do we have Polly... ...in our... ...court record? I... Huh? The best all she can say is hello. <laughs> Old Polly can say lots of things. You just need to know the secret words. The, the secret words? Ooh. What are the secret words? Polly! Polly! What's your name? Pal. Lee! Squat! <laughs> Cute! Oh. I found a new friend. Oh. Remind me, remind me to actually give you a bunny as a pet after we solve this case. I have lots and lots of bunnies that I can that I can give to people. All right. Um. What about the dishes? I mean, I would love to ask the old man what the secret words are, but 
I thought they were gonna get anything the whole out of him. Looks like a kitchen unit. It's pretty clean. Funny. Huh, funny. He doesn't look like the type who would keep things tidy like that. You're forgetting, Nick. He's running a pasta shop here. That's right, Keith. I'm confused. As we all are. It is the typical reaction. Okay, well, can you talk to us about Polly? Ugh, my memory has gotten worse of late. That's why I just tell everything important to old Polly here. Huh. Is that so? Everything important? Hmm, I wonder. Polly, what's the number to the safe? The safe? What safe? One, two, two, eight! Fuck! Alright! <laughs> oh, wow! Hey, Polly! Watch it, will ya? <laughs> See, Nick? All it takes is a little clever thinking. And a criminal... <laughs> and a criminal mind. Uh, Maya, something tells me that you are starting to enjoy spending time in detention center. Well, let me tell ya, you end up in jail and it won't end well for you, Missy. Quick, Nick, write that number down. Hey, hey no, don't, don't get me involved in your little heist schemes. You know what? Eh, little Terry was just here. T Terry? Eh? Terry? Maybe you mean Larry? Yep, that kid next door. You always used to make him cry, remember? Okay, seriously, who the fuck is this guy? He, he was wearing this tattered old coat. Got himself some whiskers growing out of his face. Must be talking about Detective Gumshoe. Oh, Gumshoe? <laughs> okay. He comes up and tells me to come down to court tomorrow. Really? Somehow, I don't think we're going to get much useful information from this guy. Maya, maybe we should be leaving. I think you're right. Alright, well, how much did we- how much time did we spend over here? Like, half an hour? Investigating this whole thing. Oh wait, I had one more question. Huh? Polly! Polly! Have we forgotten something? Squawk! Don't forget the L6. Squawk! Uh huh? Maya? How the fuck did you do that? It, is there some... Is there something that you should tell us? What did you just say, Nick? One, 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 one time, Polly. Don't forget DL6. Fuck! What? The DL6 incident? My, oh my. Hey, mister. I, I, I mean, dad. This is getting weird. Who is this old guy? Why would that bear Polly know about the L6? I have to figure out who that old man is. Oh. What? He knocked the door from the other side. Oh. I mean, uh, I actually wanted to check something else that was inside. There was actually like a trash can as well that I just noticed while talking to the old man, and I wanted to check that out. Who could that old man be? Hmm. <laughs> the plot thickens. The plot thickens like Santa Claus shaking his belly like a bowl full of jelly. I think I need to do a little more research on this DL6 incident. Maybe I should test Detective Gunshot. Okay. Well, in that case. 
Let's go to Detective Gershu. What's up, Larry? Let me just go and uh, exit through over here. And then go back to the Criminal Affairs Department. Hey, pal. Um, <clears throat> hey, pal. Long time no see. <laughs> you don't look so happy. What's wrong this time? Uh, well, it is about tomorrow's trial. And well, uh, okay, I'm not. I'm not talking about not having made any progress. I'm. I'm referring to me not being able to do my magic performance as I planned because of Mr. Manfred von Altfurt. Gonna have to. I don't know, we're gonna have to do it some other time, like I said. No way it will happen now. Sadly. Actually, we wanted to ask you something. I yeah? Alright, well... Can we talk about... Well, first thing first, let me ask you about the boat caretaker. You know the boat rental shop down at Gord Lake? Oh, yeah. The old man who runs it is appearing as a witness in, Kumaro in court tomorrow, right? Huh? How did you... Hmm... That was supposed to be top secret. Do you know who that old man is, Detective? Actually, I don't. He is a bit of an odd bird. I haven't been able to get a straight answer out of him. I decided first that he wasn't persuasive enough to stand and testify as a witness. That's why we called Miss Lola Hart yesterday. As for who he is, we have absolutely no idea. Hmm, sounds suspicious. Well, like, no personal records of him whatsoever? Like, nada? Hmm. Hmm, indeed. Okay, well, what about the DL6 incident? You can surely tell us some stuff about it. Detective Gensho, please help us. Uh huh? We need to know about the DL6 incident. And that was when Edjo's father died. I cannot help but think that it has something to do with this current case. To tell the truth, I don't know much about the S6 incident, either. Mr. Edgeworth forbade us from reading the file. So, I'm afraid I cannot show them to you, either, pal. What? However, if you can convince me somehow that the DO6 incident is related to this case, well, I guess I consider opening the file up. Proving to you that the DL6 incident is related to this case. Um. <laughs> uh, what? Um. Um. Can we actually show you this? What's that? A parrot? <laughs> did, 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 did we actually just take the parrot with us? I... Is that a... <laughs> well, yeah, there you go! Here's our evidence, Mr. Gumshoe! Say hello to Polly! And the old man at the boat rental shop parrot. And the parrot knew about that incident. Th that incident? Deal 6. W what? Something? Squawk! Don't forget the L6! Squawk! Huh? I'm pretty sure that old man must have taught her that word. Yeah, but how would that old man know about the L6 incident? Wait, what if... 
What if that old man was connected to DL6? Nick! You, you think he might be? Hmm. Well, it is a possibility. That or the old man is working with someone who is connected to the incident, but he himself knows nothing about it. But, I don't know, if the old man was the one who taught Polly that, then it can't be the former. I get you. Sounds like you need information on the DL6 incident. Who there is the station's records room? I'll give you special permission to go in and find what you need. Alright, thank you, Gamshu. Alright, let the guy detect the Gamshu. Okay, Nick, to the records room. I guess it's time we faced Edgeworth's past. Oh, indeed. It is time that we go... Let's see. Yeah, let's go to the records room. And see what we can do over here. There's gotta be tons and tons of information about the DL6 incident over here. Well, it's an it's amazingly dusty. <laughs> ten years of fouls and ten years of dust, I guess. Ah, the scent of years and years of cases of different kinds. Mmm, that sweet, sweet dust. Let's find that DL6 stuff quick. Fifteen years ago, both me and Edgeworth were nine years old. We were almost through with fourth grade when he suddenly transferred. Because of DL6? Dick, I don't know where the file is. Uh, oh, uh, thanks. Just let me know what you want to know about the DL6 incident. I'll go get the right file. Okay, well... Let's see, um... Let's see about the case summary. See what this is all about. Well, first I have to get a handle on the main facts. Like, a summary. Right! Summary, summary... Found it! Here we go! December 28, 2001. Fifteen years ago. And today is 26th. There are two more days till 28th. And the case will end up becoming forgotten. That's exactly 15, ye That's exactly 15 years ago from the day after tomorrow. So in two days, the case is closed. The incident took place in the elevator of the district court. What? Is this the same district court where we're holding a trial now? Looks like it. There was a large earthquake at 2 p.m. on that day. Part of the court building collapsed, and all the lights went out. Wow, now it's some earthquake. At the time, three people were trapped in the elevator. It took five hours for them to be rescued. F five hours. Now be scared like that, in the dark. There was a lack of oxygen in the elevator, and the survivors were unconscious. The, the survivors? One of the three in the elevator had been shot. In the heart. That was Mr. Edgeworth's father, wasn't it? He said that his father was shot before his very eyes. So Miles Edgeworth was one of the other passengers in the elevator. So... So you're saying that Edgeworth saw his father die right in front of him. That's... That is quite rough. Hmm. Okay, well, what about the victim? Do you have data on the victim, Edgeworth's father? 
Yeah, hold on. Victim, victim. Here, found it. Gregory Edgeworth, 35. Defense attorney. If he were still alive, he'd be 50. He had lost that day's case in court and got in the elevator with his son, Miles. Miles? Miles Edgeworth, of course. So, he was in the elevator with his father. From the angle of the bullet and the other evidence, it could not have been a suicide. The murder weapon, a pistol, was found in the elevator. The pistol had been fired two times. Where have I heard that before? Huh. It sounds like... It sounds just like this current case. What's going on here? Huh. So, the murder weapon was found in the elevator. And yet, this shows that the bullet went through the elevator glass. And shot him. I mean, either the murder weapon was outside at some point, or somebody just accidentally shot the glass from the inside. I mean, there were two shots. One that went through the glass, and another that killed Gre Gregory Edgeworth. Or... Now, I can imagine that there can be, like, multiple possibilities here, I'm not sure. I, I don't know if... I don't know if... Well, so far we have no evidence to show that there would that there is a second weapon involved in this. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not seeing it yet. Hmm. Actually... Uh, got any data on the suspect in there? Hmm. That would be the guy that my mom got arrested. Hold on. Th this is it. The man arrested as a suspect in DL6 was... Yani Yogi? He was a clerk in the court, apparently. A clerk? So, he must have been the... So, he must have been the third person in the elevator. Well, then he had to have done it. But, but, he was found innocent. Thanks to his defense lawyer, Robert Hammond. Hammond? The victim in our case? Right. The suspect, Mr. Yogi, was oxygen depraved. Deprived. Depraved? Deprived? So much so that he had brain damage. He lost all memory of being in the elevator. After he was declared innocent, he disappeared. Hmm. Where could Yogi have gone to, I wonder? He may be closer than we think. Closer than we may think. Huh. Well, this gives me an idea. I guess I know generally what happened in DL6 now. I still don't know what sort of impact the whole thing had on Edgeworth. Nick, are we going to take the whole file? That's too much. We'll never get it out. You're right. How about we just take what we think we'll need? The DL6 case file added to the record. Hmm. Well, what is it that we're getting here so far? File on the DL6 incident. Touched, okay. Elevator, district court. Air in elevator was oxygen depleted at time of incident. No, no, fo no clues found on the scene. Gregory Edgeworth, age 35. Defense attorney trapped in elevator returning from a lost trial with son Mouse at the age of 9. One bullet found in the heart. The murder weapon was fired twice. Uh-huh. 
One bullet found in the heart. The murder weapon was fired twice. One shot killed Edge. One shot killed Gregory, while the other must have went through the window. Yanni Yogi, age 35. Court bailiff trapped with, trapped with the Edge Wars. Memory loss due to oxygen deprivation. After his arrest, fiancé Polly Jenkins commits suicide. Fiancé? Polly Jenkins? Huh. Polly. Well, that's sad. Huh. Very interesting. Photograph of the scene of the murder. Alright. Well, this is all we got. Let's see if we can make any use out of this in the next trial. Although, in order for us to use this evidence to begin with, we're definitely gonna need to be careful about it. See what we can use so that we can convince everybody that this has something to do with the DL6 incident. Me personally, it definitely relates to it. That's probably all we'll be able to find here. Now, all that's left is the trial tomorrow. I wonder how Dad will do testifying in court. December 27, 10 a.m. District Court. Courtroom number 3. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The defense's detective assistant is ready, Your Honor. Very well. Apparently the prosecution is also ready. Who is the judge here anyway? Mr. Von Carmel, your opening statement. Uh, very well. No opening statement, so... Yeah. Not so fast, Judge. I was taking a meaningful pause before speaking. Uh, right, of course. A prediction. Today's trial will end in three minutes from now. Oh. What a coincidence. My hot chocolate is also gonna be ready three minutes from now. Order, order. M Mr. Von Carmel, what is the meaning of your statement just now? Bah! Must you question everything? It will be over in three minutes. We have no time to waste. I'll call my witness now. Uh, uh, right. I call my witness. My decisive witness to the stand. It's that mysterious boat shop owner. Oh boy. Witness, state your profession. Mm. Mm. I uh, am the proprietor of the first round, the wet noodle at Gort Lake. And I uh, also rent boats. The night of the incident, you were in the boat rental shop, correct? Uh, yep, yeah. yep, I was. Please testify. Wait a second. I still haven't heard who this old guy is. Mm. Yeah, you know what? Let me just raise an objection over here. Why? We have to know this. Wait a minute. The witness hasn't stated his name yet. Because I did not ask him, Mr. Wright. Pa! Well, it is important nonetheless for us to know his name too. Whether you want to or not. I mean, he could be your grandpapa for all we know. Papa! I have predicted this trial will end in three minutes. 
Stop asking trivial questions and cooperate. Yeah, right. The Vindus. The. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm gonna have to apologize sometimes. I, I, I didn't do this mistake like last time, but. Uh, I'm not gonna be surprised if uh, my my weak German accent is gonna bleed into other people, like like the judge over here. I was I'm o I almost said witness instead of witness. The witness will state his name. Hmm. What no no. Hmm. Well. Uh... I'm not really sure. Yep. What do you mean? My, uh, my memory. Your Honor, the witness does not remember anything beyond the last several years. Ergo, he cannot recall his own name. Hmm. Hmm. He cannot recall. He, he cannot recall. You say? Yes, but the incident in question took place three days ago. He can testify. Very well. Let's hear his testimony then, shall we? Witness. It was the night of the 24th, just after midnight. Yep. I was in the restaurant, where I uh, uh, rent boats, as usual. Then I heard a bang. Yep. When I looked out the window, I saw a boat just floating on the lake. Then I heard another bang! Just about then, the boat comes back to shore, and a man walks by my window. Hmm. Very well. I'd like to begin the cross-examination. Up. Uh, there is nothing to question in my witness's testimony. Ergo, no need for cross-examination. And on what grounds do you think we should not have a cross-examination, Mr. Von Karma? Besides, there are only 10 seconds left before our three minutes are up. Judge, your verdict, now. Uh, uh, yes, uh, Mr. Wright. Well, we're definitely gonna cross-examine this. I don't care what what Von Karmaya has to say. What are you saying? Of course I'll cross-examine the witness. Hmm. Very well. You may begin. <laughs> uh, excuse, excuse me? M Mr. Von Karma? Uh... Is he... Is he having a heart attack? <laughs> oh, please tell me that he is. Ooh, there you go. I can also enjoy my hot chocolate while witnessing Von Karma dying right in front of us. How lovely. Three minutes just passed. I see. Well then, let's just take our time. You may cross-examine the witness. Uh, okay. No, seriously, what the fuck just happened? Uh, anyway. Uh, well, despite uh, Von Karma's sudden outburst over here and having this old man in the court who will offer us quite the clown fest, let's see about getting to the bottom of this. Serious mode activate. No. Over the top goofiness on my part. No magic performances. Nothing. We will all have a very serious and boring trial that will either end the case in our favor or not. No magic performances. Nada. <laughs> 